All right, let's talk Cleveland Browns. Let's talk Deshaun Watson as the Browns. Another impressive victory against a good football team. I mean, they've beaten really some great teams on the, the year now. They beat San Francisco. Obviously, they just destroyed the Cincinnati Bengals in week one. And uh, now they beat Baltimore. And while, you know, I had kind of, I have been lower on the Browns than most people. Uh, I have kind of said, yes, their defense is very good. Yes, their running game is very good. But if you don't have a quarterback, you can get to the playoffs that way. But can you make a deep playoff run? Usually, no. While there have been exceptions, of course, you know, like the 2015 Denver Broncos, feels like more often than not, you end up being the Mitchell Trubisky Bears uh, if you don't have the quarterback play. Of course, you could argue that the Browns do have a quarterback. They're paying a lot for a quarterback at the very least, but he hasn't really been, you know, outstanding since joining Cleveland. So that's why I was a little bit lower on him. However, when I, you know, I, I missed the game live on Sunday, but when I was watch looking on Twitter, a lot of people were saying, you know, look at Watson. Watson is back. And if Watson is back, this team is back. And is he actually back? Well, let's talk about it. If you look at pro football focus grades, um, the answer is just no. The answer is no, he's not back. Um, that's not to say that he for sure isn't back, but uh, the grades wasn't great for the game. Uh, 59.9 grade, which is not a, not a great grade. It, it's just not. Uh, you know, just for context, Zach Wilson on the year has uh, a higher grade than this one. So not spectacular, but I think a lot of people viewed it not necessarily as Watson was great from minute one to minute 60, but more so he started slow, but then had a great fourth quarter. That's kind of how most people viewed it. And first, to kind of defend the play of Deshaun Watson a little bit, um, something like this, I actually thought Watson, while not perfect early on, wasn't really a disaster early on either. Th there were a couple missed throws. This one, one-on-one -on -one matchup to Amari Cooper on the outside here. Watch as Watson takes the snap. He is going to eventually look over, does a good job of not looking over immediately. So the safety is out of, you know, isn't in position to be able to, you know, knock this on away. Trying to get the ball to Cooper here. As you see, it's just a tad overthrown. That was a tough play. You really had to put that one right on the money. Just overthrew it a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to crush a quarterback for missing that one. Like, it, it's a tough throw. It, it is. You would like to see you, you hit it sometimes, right? But you don't expect to you see it every time. Like, also, this one's another one where it's, you know, zone coverage, and you're going to see Watson kind of throw it behind uh, his intended target there. I wonder if that's a communication thing, though. The throw itself looks terrible, but I actually wonder if the receiver was supposed to stop. So another one I'm not going to crush Watson for. And even some of the, like, you know, what? So he started off 0-5 you know, with an interception. The interception, though, was, uh, again, kind of a weird play. It got, you know, batted up and then intercepted for a touchdown. Bit of a fluky play there. Some some of what was going wrong was things like this. We'll watch how Watson takes the snap. He is going to, you know, at this point, look down the field. I've paused it here. Uh, the play hasn't fully developed the way he wants. It, it needs another half second or so. However, now pressure comes. He's able to uh, actually manage to stay on his feet and throws the football away. Like, to me, that's actually a positive play, even though it resulted in, in his fifth straight non-completion of the day, technically not fifth straight incompletion because one was completed to the wrong team, uh, but you know what I mean. So like those weren't great. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to sit here and say that like, oh, he, there was nothing he could do. Like at, at the end of the day, you know, you can get on the same page with your receiver. You can make that Amari Cooper throw. They're paying you to make those throws. So like it's fair to criticize him. Just saying it wasn't a disaster like I think some people were saying, you know, early on. But I also think that, you know, later in the game, it wasn't a masterpiece, like some people are also saying. I think that he he made he made the right plays. He did. And that's what you want to see right now for Cleveland, right? Baby steps. You don't have to be the guy who is, uh, you know, is Houston Deshaun Watson just yet. It, can you at least be a solid quarterback who can run the offense? And like he was. He, in the second half, he certainly was. After that kind of, you know, one for nine start, he was. This play is, this is one thing that Watson's done very well, still in Cleveland. Like in Cleveland, he's been good at this, like, throughout. Even last year when he really struggled, he was good at this aspect where it's man coverage that the Baltimore is in on a third down and six. And watch how Watson takes a snap. He's going to look down the field. He's going to move up in the pocket. And at this point, you know, uh, there's you know, a defender trying to see if he can tackle Watson. He kind of read the play and steps forward. But watch how Watson is able to move around. Patrick Queen gets the first down. Queen was kind of the only guy who could make a play on that one due to the man coverage situation. Uh, and because of this, 
you know, Watson was able to make some plays, but also Baltimore then started saying, well, can we just play man coverage like we like to do, or do we have to play some zone? The issue is, like something like this, when they went to zone, when you're a team that prefers to play man, and then you have to play zone, it just makes things a lot more difficult. Like, if you're a zone team who then drops back into man, you can kind of make that work, because it's you know, it's simple, right? You just cover your guy. Uh, you can kind of do that. But when you're a uh, man team that now has to play zone, you're not as used to knowing exactly what to do in these situations. This play, you just have a receiver trying to get into, right over the middle of the field, get some yards. It's Amari Cooper. And watch how Watson takes the snap. He's going to first look towards his right, but then sees Amari Cooper is wide open right here and watch him be able to make this throw. Again, it's not the highest degree of difficulty play. Again, we're not, I'm not like I said, we're not seeing Houston uh, Deshaun Watson, but at the end of the day, if you get a guy wide open and you hit the guy wide open, if you're a Browns fan, you don't care how good the quarterback is playing when he hits the wide open guy and you get a big completion. You just care that you got a big completion. And like there were some moments of like really good stuff from Watson. Again, kind of, you know, maybe using the mobility and the throwing together, like what's going to happen on this play. Watch how Watson takes the snap. He is going to immediately see pressure by Jadavian Clowney on this play. So Watson has to see what he can do to figure something out. But again, he does you know, move around in the pocket, steps up, eventually throws before getting past the first down marker. They, or excuse me, uh, the line of scrimmage. They pick up the first, the touchdown. Uh, keep trying to say first down for some reason. Picks up the touchdown. That was the, you know, the one that got them back in it. They then, you know, admittedly, got kind of a fluky pick six, which allowed them to, you know, really get back in it there for Cleveland. They got the final drive going. Like, listen, this is still a run first and play good defense team. That That's still where they are. And, I, you know, so if you're wondering, how do I view the Browns? Am I now much more pro Cleveland Browns? A little bit. I'm I'm more on their side now. I still think they're a, a wild a, a wild card, and I don't mean they're going to be a wild card team. Although that still seems very possible, I just think they're a big wild card in terms of how good they can be. The reality is, well, Watson did look better in this game, and you know there were some moments uh, going 20 for 34, 213 yards, one touchdown, one interception, and having a PFF grade below 60 is just not going to get it done if you want to make a deep playoff run. Yes, you can win some impressive games, but you're probably not going to be able to do this to a, you know two good teams four games in a row. It seems unlikely. You're going to need a quarterback to win a game or two in there. But Watson isn't 100% healthy. Watson could get better. Watson has the ability to improve. And if he does improve and goes back to Houston to Sean Watson, this is absolutely not just a threat to go on a deep playoff run. They're a threat to win the Super Bowl. They have that much talent. Uh, but at the end of the day, if Deshaun Watson is a below average quarterback, I don't see them even going on a deep playoff run. That's still how I view Cleveland. This game hasn't really massively changed my opinion of Cleveland, uh, but maybe has made me feel like, okay, there's maybe a more, more potential of them reaching their ceiling is how I view them. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.